Okay, so we have set up our canvas. It is eight by 10 inches by 300 pixels per inch. So that's gonna take quite a bit of processing. So what I'm doing, I'll actually stretch my window here so I can show you a little bit more on the video. So I have my inspirations off to the side. I have my, my references. And now I have a, a layer for loose sketching. And I'm going to show you the difference between default brushes and we're going to make a custom brush. So if I just start, we'll use a brush tool that we've used before. It's just the regular circular brush tool. You can pick the size of it. I'm going to keep it. This is what we use to do digital inking. I'm going to keep it maybe at about 20. And then I'm going to make its hardness pretty soft, so maybe about 30% hardness. I'm going to use the default foreground color, which is black. Its opacity is 80%. Or I'm sorry, its opacity is 100%, so this is going to be a really solid black line. And, when I, and I have smoothing at zero, so there's no lag in it. And I can see, okay, well, if I sketch this way, maybe I want, and I'm just using a trackpad, maybe I want her cranium there, her nose roughly there. This is going to look really awkward and chunky because I'm using this brush. Maybe her hairline is there, her eye is here. So I'm just looking at the reference and kind of freehanding it. I like that tilt of her head, then all of this dark hair kind of falling down. There's that nice V that's created where it covers her ear and then goes around her jaw. Her neck is here. So even though this brush, if I zoom in, you can see it's soft edged looks kind of blurry at the edge. It's only 30% hardness. It's still so opaque that when I use it, it just looks like a marker. And that's because it's just the default solid brush. I'm not going to try to do any details here, like the different beads of the necklace, but I can kind of put the placement in that I'm thinking of. And then where the light catches her shirt, and then her hair coming from behind. And I'm not going to try to put in her hand, right? So that's a loose sketch. And it's not too different from what this artist uses. But notice that this artist doesn't use solid black. So even if you use the default brush, ah, let me get to it. The zoom tools are getting in my way here. So even if you use the default brush, you can always modify it because this is too harsh. It's too much like digital inking. So what I'm going to do is simply adjust it and change the hue saturation of that black line. Now, because it's black, I have to click on colorize to actually give it color. And I think it's a good idea to, to let your sketch have a little bit of color. So I'm going to saturate it. And then I can pick the hue. And I'm going to pick kind of a reddish pinkish color because I think that will blend well with some of the colors I'm picking. I'm going to lighten it quite a bit. And then, even though I used a really soft edge brush, I might use my Gaussian blur filter to soften it even more like it was painted with a brush instead of just with a solid line trackpad. Now, for traditional painting, a lot of artists like to use something called vine charcoal on their canvas or on their wood panels before they paint. And it's because it's such a soft line charcoal. And that charcoal just kind of lifts up and dissolves into the paint as you paint over it. So that's a good inspiration. Now, when it comes to painting, 
individual strokes, I don't want to keep using this really harsh mark. Instead, I want to create my own kind of mark. So I'm going to make, I'm going to go ahead and lock that sketch layer. And notice I didn't try to make it too perfect or accurate. It just gives me a location and I'm going to refine it through the painting. And so for my first painting layer, I'm going to call this rough paint, rough shapes. It's not going to work for me to use this brush, but just use it really large like this. It's just, I lose everything too quickly. So I need to customize a brush. I can use some of the built-in brushes, but the best way to understand the advantages of different brushes is to build it for yourself and see what you can play with. So to do that, I'm going to save my work, which saves all of my layers and my workspace. Now I'm going to open up a new file within PhotoP or Photoshop. I'm going to call this my spring 2021, and I'm going to make this pixel based, and I want it to be just 1000 by 1000 pixels. When I design brushes, that's the, the box I design them in. It doesn't matter what resolution because you're setting the exact pixels. I'm going to use a white background. Okay, now I want to create something that's really kind of open and textural. So I can start by using some of the default brushes within PhotoP. Photoshop has these as well. They won't let you change the hardness of them because they're varied. But they will let you change the, the opacity and the flow. So, so I want to use it with solid black. And unfortunately, you see how every time I click it, it's at the same angle. So I want to get to the brush options, which you'll find here. It says BRU, or you can find it under Window for Brush Window. And then I'm going to look at first the tip dynamics. This is like, what is the, the tip of your brush like? And I want to change... I want to jitter it so it changes a little bit each time I use it. It changes its size a little bit. I want to just make its minimal diameter so it can't get down to zero. That's if you're using a pressure sensitivity uh, stylus. And then the most important one, in my opinion, is the angle jitter. So it's not always at the same angle. I'm going to set that to about 25%. Same with the roundness jitter. It will slightly change the edges of the shape. And then when I use it, you see how it will build up. And that's just playing with tip dynamics. Now, if I was using a tablet and I have it set here, this would be pressure sensitive. So it would be smaller when I pressed lighter and, and bigger when I pressed uh, harder. But that gives me a nice kind of brush texture. And that's a built-in brush with just some basic modification. So what I want to do is draw my own brush shape. So I, I'm going to start back with just white. And now I'm going to use this brush I customized. It will remember it in my brush settings until I close PhotoP. And then I just want to start painting shapes with it that are kind of scumbly and different. And I can even play with its opacity. And I tend to do a brush design on a 45 degree angle. So it's slightly a flat head brush that's a little bit narrower at the ends than at the center. So it has a little bit of a flat head, but it also tapers. And then I might play with the size and fill in with lower opacity. And then I might take it at a higher opacity, at a smaller size, not that small, more like 100 pixels. 
and just muddy it up. And then if I feel like it's getting too strong in any one place and I want to kind of cut it and taper it, this is my favorite method. I can use this same brush that I'm using to paint black right now with these uneven edges. It's like a sponge. And I can change that, swap it so it's solid white. And I can kind of cut away from it with the white at 99% opacity. And maybe take that shape down a little bit. So this is just kind of getting me used to using brushes. And because I have smooth at zero, which I recommend, even though the photo piece smooth tool is great for digital inking, it's just going to slow you down in digital painting. You want the computer to pick up every little movement you make. And I can kind of punch some holes in it. Again, kind of like sponge painting. And then I can even, because I just want this to be a pretty unique brush, I can lasso certain parts, hit Command J, duplicate that. Oops. Unlock that duplicate, kind of move it over in other areas. I can Control T and I can warp it. Then I can paint over its edges with white. So you can just do lots of things to get an interesting varied shape. You can duplicate it again. You can flip it, scale it, make it a lot smaller, more nitpicky in terms of detail. Put it over there and maybe paint over it with black in certain areas. Chunk up this middle a little. And maybe one more time, duplicate it, bring it up. That's why compositing skills are so helpful to every part of digital art. Even when you're just doing internal compositing with your own pixels that you just created. It's going to make it look less computer generated, more customized, because you get to control all these decisions. All right, so this, this looks like an interesting kind of broken up brush, mostly soft edged, right? So now, how do I make this a brush? Well, I'm going to flatten everything. So I go to layer, go down all the way to the bottom to flatten image. So it's just a black and white image with some gray in here. I could go to image mode and up the levels. So darken the blacks, brighten the lights, just to make it a little bit more defined, which can help in some ways. But I want that kind of broken edge to it. So. Yeah, I think I like the levels adjustment. Now to change it into a brush, what I do is I go to the brush options. Let's see, I always forget how to do this. I click on the arrow next to all the default brush options and I'm gonna say define new. So now this brush, if I go to my assignment, I scroll down and it will be the brush at the bottom. Oh wait, no, that wasn't as easy as that. It's as easy as that in Photoshop. So I defined new. And then it said brush added. 